All right, thanks for watching another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Uh, this video is a first in a series, and we're going to call it Metals and How to Weld Them. And the reason we're going to call it that is because it's going to be loosely based on metals and how to weld them. Now, this is the best value of a welding textbook that you can probably get anywhere. You can get it from the James F. Lincoln Arc Welding Foundation. Google that. It's a non-profit division of the Lincoln Electric and uh, it is priced accordingly. You can get it, I believe, on that website for order directly from there for 10 bucks. You will see this all over eBay and Amazon for 20 to 30 dollars. You do not have to pay that much for it. Go straight to the Lincoln Foundation, order it for 10 bucks, best money ever spent. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to break this down into several different videos so you won't have to watch all of anything if you're not interested in nickel alloys. You won't have to watch nickel alloys, but we're going to break it down and we're going to do one segment per. We're going to break it down into carbon and low alloy steels, one for stainless steels, one for nickel alloys, one for aluminum alloys, magnesium, titanium, cobalt, and copper alloys. And uh, some of them will be fairly short. Some of them will, will dive in a little bit deeper. I'm going to try to mix in some some arc shots here and there, but this is going to be just a high level, uh, a high level description of properties of metals and very basic metallurgy, what metals are used for what uh, and why. And if you watch it all, you're going to have a really good grasp on uh, what metal is used for what and why. Why stainless steel is just so popular for food surface equipment and why nickel alloys are used in gas turbine engines for aircraft and why magnesium is used for gearboxes and why cobalt alloys are used in the hot section uh, parts and why, we, why cobalt is used for hard facing. I'm going to try to explain it in down and dirty language. I'm not going to be using terms like hexagonal close packed or crystalline lattice structure. I just said them. I won't say them anymore unless I'm making fun of that kind of stuff. Actually, I don't make fun of it. Actually, I'm, I'm, I'm actually kind of into that crap, but I know not everybody is, so I'm going to try to boil it down for you and uh... all right first let's talk about plain carbon steel we've got low carbon medium carbon and high carbon and we'll talk about cast iron and low alloy steels a little bit too and first low carbon steel it's got uh, up to 0.29 percent carbon steel so low carbon steel is used to make things like beams for bridges and structures high rises low end fasteners car fenders car bodies car chassis cheap very cheap stuff, very formable, very weldable, no real concerns about hardening or getting brittle from the heat from welding. If you've been to welding school, you pretty much learn on low carbon steel. Uh, pipe and pressure vessels are often made out of low carbon steel. And to weld low carbon steel, you can use any of the conventional weld processes, TIG welding, or MIG welding, or stick, weld, stick welding, excuse me, stick welding, or flux core, or even gas welding. But probably TIG, MIG, and stick and flux core are the heavy hitters for uh, because it's just, they're productive. You know, low carbon steel is very, uh, very uh, soft. All right, you can work harden it by putting it through rollers, but this is some hot rolled steel, and it's just like butter. You can bend it; it's ductile. You can bend it back and forth all day long. That would not be the ticket for making something like this, like this body. This is a strong hand tool, vice grip type uh, C-tong, sheet metal clamp, whatever. This, the body of this thing is likely to be made out of something like uh, 1045 carbon steel. You know, medium, what kind of th other things are made from medium carbon steel? Let's go over medium carbon steel a little bit. Medium carbon steels are used for a little bit more strength and a little bit more hardness are required than you can get out of low carbon steel. High strength bolts and fasteners, shaft axles, gears, crankshafts, etc. Parts for railroad equipment. Things where some more strength and hardness is required. Remember, low carbon steel really won't respond to heat treatment. Now, what about high carbon steel? Well, the same thing, where even more hardness is required. You know, uh, things like tool and die equipment, knife blades, springs, and cutting tools, where things where the hardness needs to be a, a way higher than you can get out of either low or medium carbon steel. 
low alloy steels, the most commonly uh, known one is probably 4130 chromoly because it's used so much in motorsports and for small aircraft and things like that. But there are others like 4340 and 4140 and other gear materials like you know that that are that are just uh, low alloy steels, which means they have carbon as well as chromium, nickel, or uh, molybdenum mixed in to achieve a certain effect. Now there's a lot of numbering systems and we could make an hour long video and still not cover them, but remember this, the, the 18 on the end of 1018 indicates 0.18% carbon. That's not much carbon. Remember, cast iron has over 10 times that much. The same thing here for the 4340 steel indicates a 0.4% carbon as well as having some nickel and chromium and molybdenum in it. All right, the main thing you need to remember about carbon and low alloy steels is how does the heat from welding affect the metal? That is the main thing that affects what you do when you weld it, or in other words, whether or not you preheat it and things like that. Basically, the way it hardens is it heats up really red hot and then cools quickly, and that's what makes that's what makes carbon and low alloy steels increase in hardness and strength. It's also what makes them brittle in the case of uh, tool steels or cast iron. So here I'm heating up a piece of 4130 red hot throwing it in a bucket of water just to just to illustrate it's the same thing that happens when you weld heat and weld something like cast iron or other high carbon material you melt you actually melt a, a small area but if the if the metal around it is not hot then it quenches just like if you were putting it in a bucket of water it has the same effect it draws the heat away now a cast iron is pretty soft normally you can file it it cuts with a file pretty easily but if you puddle the corner like this you achieve the same thing as if you heated it up red, red, red hot and dunked it in a bucket of cold water. And when you run a file over that, it just slips over it like if it was a ball bearing. And you know you can't file a ball bearing. Ball bearings are up around 60 to 65 on the Rockwell C scale and that's too too much to file. This Incidentally, the little exercise I did by puddling the very corner of that uh, exhaust manifold, that is a good way to tell if something is hardenable whether it's cast iron or whatever. Just pick a spot that it won't hurt anything, puddle it, and file it. About carbon and low alloy steels, stainless steels, nickel alloys. <laughs> Alright, stay tuned for the next video in this series. going to be about stainless steel and properties of stainless steel. Thanks for watching. Visit WeldingTipsAndTricks.com.